Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And I want us to think for a little while here about what that means. I mean, this very gospel tells us that Jesus is the true light, which enlightens everyone. It tells us that Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. But Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. This very gospel says that a woman, a despised Samaritan, mind you, came to Jesus as he sat by a well at the very moment when the sun was at the zenith of the sky. And yes, it was the hottest part of the day, that time of day when others hide in their homes from fear of the, of the heat, but she, she was not afraid of the light and... In the illumination of that day, she came to see Jesus as prophet and Messiah. She came by day, but Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Jesus said he was the light of the world, and he proved it by giving to a blind man sight. Jesus taught that those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. That it is those who walk at night who stumble because the light is not in them. Yet, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was greatly respected by all for his commitment to the law. He sat in councils. He spoke at meetings where he was highly honored, where people were always willing to hear his opinions and his judgments. He counted powerful people like Joseph of Arimathea among his friends. Joseph, who went in and out among Roman governors who could put his hands on large sums of money to bury a friend on short notice. Everywhere he went, Nicodemus could count on a warm welcome and a friendly conversation. He was always given an honored place when invited to dinner. And ever, if ever, Nicodemus was caught in a compromising position, Everyone gave him the benefit of the doubt. Not everyone can count on that, mind you. When something goes missing, for example, there are certain people who are always as suspected because of their race or their status or maybe their living situation. They might even be accused despite there being no evidence against them whatsoever. Some people live in constant expectation of such accusations, but Nicodemus never, never had to worry about such things. On the contrary, people always assumed the best of Nicodemus, even when he gave them no reason to do so. This was a man whose days brought him nothing but honor and respect, yet... Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus knew that Jesus was a teacher who had come from God. He had no doubts about that because he had seen and considered what Jesus had done and recognized that such powerful acts could only be accomplished when God was with somebody. And when Nicodemus said this to Jesus, he said it with utter sincerity. And yet, knowing all of this, all of this, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. What's wrong with this picture? When you are someone who has a privileged position in society, you act openly. 
You carry out your deeds in the full light of day. If you believe that somebody has come from God and that the goals and, uh, that they pursue are good, will you not say so openly? What is the point of believing something if you will not say it at times and in places where people will hear it? If you are someone who loves the light, why, oh why, are you skulking around in the darkness of the night? But here's the truth. Nicodemus is not alone. There have been many others like him who have come to Jesus and yet have come at night. In 1963, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. King, was arrested and imprisoned in the Birmingham City Jail for disobeying an injunction that banned protests against racial policy. And there was a group of eight white Christian leaders who put out a statement when he was arrested. They said, they said that Dr. King's goals of racial equality were good. That it was the right thing to do to build a more just society. They might as well have said, Rabbi, we know that you are a good teacher who has come from God. For you teach a way of justice. They agreed with his goals. Just one problem. They came to Jesus by night. They called the actions of King unwise and untimely. They thought that his manner of uh, his, his way of acting that was open and confrontational, confrontational was wrong. Confr confrontational was wrong. Their problem with him was that his demands for justice and for change were made in the full light of day. And they felt that the only way to affect the change that was needed was to work without disturbing things, without shaking anything up. They wanted to come by night so that no one would see, maybe no one would even notice the change. Dr. King's response to them is justly famous. When he read the statement from these eight white leaders, he began writing a response immediately, writing on the newspaper clipping itself. And then he continued writing on scraps of paper that were passed to him by one of the black trustees in the jail. And then he finally finished working on legal pads supplied to him by his lawyers. And what he wrote as a response was finally published as the letter from the Birmingham jail. A great work of American literature. And there is one passage in that letter that I know I must return to regularly in order to challenge myself. I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate, King writes. <laughs> he might as well be saying, I am disappointed with those who come by night. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion, he continues, in the language of the time, that the, great, that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. It's kind of what Nicodemus was doing with Jesus. He was trying to say, I agree with your goal that you seek, but 
I'm not willing to risk my standing or my reputation by using them to support what you're doing. Oh, I'll come, but I will come by night. And I think that Jesus understood all of that. Just as Martin Luther King Jr. recognized that those eight leaders were indeed men of goodwill who were speaking with sincerity. Jesus also understood that Nicodemus had good intentions, wanted to do the right thing, but the fact that he came by night told Jesus that Nicodemus needed more than just good intentions. Jesus cut him off immediately by saying to him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus was puzzled. <laughs> he had come, he thought, to discuss the finer points of, of creating justice without having to risk himself by showing his intentions in the light of day. Jesus seemed to have just Change the subject. Nicodemus blinked and he declared that, that what Jesus had said seemed nonsensical. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Ah, but you see, Jesus hadn't changed the subject. What he said made perfect sense sense. See, it didn't matter if Nicodemus agreed with Jesus' goals. didn't matter if he believed the right things about Jesus, because apparently none of that had persuaded Nicodemus to come by day. So Nicodemus needed something. He needed to be born again. Down through the centuries, people have wondered what exactly Jesus meant by that demand. I mean, even Nicodemus was puzzled, as you see in the passage. Doesn't help, actually, that the Greek phrase that Jesus uses in the gospel has a double meaning. It means both born again and born from above. And that becomes a reason for a misunderstanding between Nicodemus and Jesus. But what Jesus was saying, and what Nicodemus failed to understand, was that Nicodemus didn't just need another birth into a life oriented towards the values of this world. Had Nicodemus gone back to his mother's womb to be born again, as he suggested, well, of course, he would have only been born once again to a world of privilege and honor, the world given to him by his first birth. So if he needed to be born anew, he needed to be born from a new place, from above. Born with the different attitudes and the priorities of heaven. Now, as you know, of course, that phrase used by Jesus, speaking to Nicodemus, his demand that he be born again or born from above, has kind of taken on a life all its own. And people have pulled that phrase out of the context of that story and used it as a definition of a kind of Christianity. I've been I'm a born-again Christian, someone will say, of course. And what they're saying when they say that is that their faith began with the kind of experience that Jesus told Nicodemus he needed to have, right? That's all fine and good. Assuming, of course, that you understand what Jesus was saying to Nicodemus. Sometimes, sometimes when people say that, when they say I've been born again, they mean they've had a powerful experience of the presence of Jesus. 
I mean, maybe they were at a low time in their life, regretting something they'd done, and they experienced the presence of Jesus in a way that brought them the healing and the forgiveness they needed most. Other people might have had their experience of the presence of Jesus in public worship, you know, among the people of God, praising. They found themselves transported into the presence of Jesus. Such experiences are wonderful. If you've had such an experience in your life, you have been blessed. I will never question the validity of somebody's experience of Jesus, but I will ask this. If you have encountered Jesus, but you came to him by night, have you really been born from above? Have you really had that born from above experience that Jesus is talking about? I mean, Nicodemus encountered Jesus, who was right there speaking to him. And yet, Jesus told him that he was still in need of a second birth. Just experiencing Jesus isn't necessarily being born from above. So that means that if you've had that, if you've been blessed with a wonderful experience of the presence of Jesus, and it doesn't transform your priorities, if it doesn't make you willing to stick your neck out, for what Jesus stood for, for what was right and just. Jesus might be looking for something more from you. Now let's be clear about one thing. Jesus was glad that Nicodemus came to him. Whenever he came to him. In the same way Jesus is glad you came to him. Whenever you came on whatever terms as well. Later in this passage, we have one of the most powerful statements of God's love and acceptance in the entire Bible, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. On whatever terms Nicodemus was willing to believe in Jesus, with whatever trust he was willing to place, even if he came by night. Yes, Jesus accepted that. In the same way, Jesus accepts whatever trust you are able to place in him as well. But for your sake, for your sake, Jesus would rather you not come by night. Would rather that you come in the fullness of the day that you be born from above, so as not to value the fleeting things of this earth, things like wealth or status, over the priorities of heaven. Jesus wishes that for you, just as he wished it for Nicodemus, because Jesus wants you to be part of the great work that Jesus is doing in this world, work that is done by day. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. You don't have to. And if you remember that, I think you're well on your way to begin to carry out the works of the day as we work together to change the world for the better. Teach us, Jesus, teach us to come to you by day. Teach us what that means. Amen.